Today on Paul's Old Crap, we're going to take a look at Earth Explorer. This is an Apple software title under the Apple Home Learning series. And this is something I bought on eBay last year. Uh, I was doing a bit of a shopping spree out of boredom and I was buying up a lot of uh, big box software and games and such. And this one popped up and it was sealed new in box and yeah, basically caught my eye and I decided I would pick it up for the purpose of making a video on it. I don't really have any information on this. Uh, it does appear to be some sort of interactive encyclopedia and the only other thing to note is this originally was $69 when this was being sold in stores. Uh, I can't remember exactly what I paid for this. It probably wasn't much. I, I suspect it was between $20 and $30. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, I think what we'll do now is uh, we'll open this up and see what's inside. All right. So what we're going to do first is we're going to open this up. And to do that, we're going to use our lucky knife. So... We're just going to do a careful cut along the lid here. Should be good. My one concern about um, unwrapping this is I do lose this original retail uh, sticker on here, but I didn't buy this to keep it on a shelf unopened. I want to see what was uh, inside the box. So, let's take a look here. Looks like everything's out. So, starts off with Apple Computer Software Licensing Agreement. Wow. That looks interesting. Uh, okay, so we've got the user's guide here, and then we do have the software CD. Uh, let's take a look at the CD here first. The next generation will need to understand the interconnections between the atmosphere, sea, and land, blah, 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 blah. Interesting. Uh, let's see. Oh, it looks like it actually fallen out of the thing there. So this is Earth Explorer for Macintosh, the multimedia encyclopedia of the environment and more. This, uh, this does look like an interesting product. Um, I guess we'll find out when we try it out. Uh, let's take a look at the user's guide though. Using Earth Explorer or Macintosh computer. Uh, let's we really jump ahead. Uh, it tells you how to use it. So what you will need is a Macintosh computer with five megabytes of RAM. Uh, you need to be running system 7.0.1 or greater. 12-inch uh, screen color also requires a CD-ROM, obviously. This uh, appears to cover the installation, which is probably pretty straightforward. Um, yes. An overview of Earth Explorer. Uh, home screen, articles, explore, hot topics, data sets. Hmm. Okay, so yeah, it has a bunch of screenshots here about uh, the different parts that uh, you can access from that home area. Uh, menu full of, uh, looks like, games and various things that are part of this uh, software. Interpreting a data set. Hmm. Investigating with an explore topic. Uh, so I guess different sections, you have this explore option and then 
different types of questions here. Why is it cold at the poles? Uh, I'm assuming that's in reference to the North and South Pole. Um, so it looks like the manual basically covers navigation and stuff like that. Yeah, so strange. We're talking about uh, this troubleshooting section says something about uh, a Windows application, but I thought this was uh, yeah. It's got the information here about uh, Windows computers. This is kind of interesting. Um, the box just says it's uh, Macintosh. Strange. So yeah, I guess they made a uh, Windows version of this then, and they didn't uh, do it with both versions in the same box, so if you were wanting the Windows one, I'm assuming you'd have to go buy it. Uh, but yeah, so I think what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, go ahead and install the software onto our Quadra 840 and uh, try it out. Okay, so we've got our Macintosh Quadra set up, and if we go and uh, look at the about this computer, uh, we are running system software 7.6.1, and we have surely enough memory to run this application. So, if we take the CD out. All right. Okay, so we have Earth Explorer, and we're going to go ahead and run the installer. Uh, let's see. Um, we're going to do the custom install because the easy install wants to install QuickTime 2.0, and I think I have a newer version than that on there. Uh, so we're going to do the Earth Explorer application, and we're going to install the font. Uh, and then uh, I guess the EE resources, I have no idea what that's supposed to be. But we don't want to do the QuickTime stuff because, uh, yeah, we already have that. So, uh, okay, continue. And this should only take a moment, I think. Okay, and it's going to want us to restart, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Alright, so the reboot is complete. Uh, let's go into the hard drive, and I believe this should have just installed, there we go, Earth Explorer, and let's go ahead and run this. doesn't like the fact that we're in higher than 256 color mode. Eh, I don't know. And I still hear it reading a bit off the CD-ROM drive, so even though the application's installed, I think you still need to, you know. Huh, interesting. Okay. So yeah, it sounds like you still need the CD-ROM in the drive, because I can hear it uh, reading off of it probably all these multimedia things, so... And I don't want it to keep playing some music in case it's copyrighted, so... <laughs> uh, anyway, so it looks like we're at the main menu here now. Um, let's jump into uh, Explorer. So this is actually just like a full-on screenshot from what we had in the menu, or not the menu, the uh, the manual, because uh, I remember seeing this. Why is it cold at the poles? Um, so that's hmm, interesting. So I don't know if this is all that's available in the Explore menu. Um, let's click that one anyway. And linking to Explorers. It's barely cold at the North Pole. At the same time, it's really hot at the equator. Why? Read the introduction and see if you can find the answer by moving a single beam of light over the Earth. 
Okay, so it's kind of like, uh, gotta figure out, whoops, what did I do? I have no idea what this thing wants me to do. So it's like basically, you figure the out... The sun's light is spread out moderately in the mid-latitude. The input of energy from the sun per unit area is an intermediate amount. The temperature at the mid-latitude is mild. Okay, so it's... Since the sun's light is spread out over a wide area at the poles, the input of energy from the sun per unit area is at its lowest. Therefore, it's cold at the poles. Okay, so it's basically just giving us a tutorial about the, uh, the equator and why light is different in different parts of the globe, I guess. So, uh, but I'm assuming we already know that, so let's just go back home and see what else we have. Uh, if we take a look at what's hot topics. Uh, wetlands, ozone, acid rain, nuclear power, rainforest. Hmm. What else do we have in here? Uh, let's look at... Hmm... Urban transportation? Welcome to Hot Topics. You're about to meet some people who have an environmental problem. They need you to help them sort out the issue. Click the story button to read all about it. But first, try clicking on other parts of the picture. Really? What if we click up here? I have no idea what just happened. Thanks for coming. Hey, how are you? How are you? Good, good. Hey, how are you guys doing? Good to see you. Very good to see you. Thank you very, thank you very much. Thank you. Same to you. Say hello to the lovely wife. Thank you. Good to see you. Good. Hey, how are you? Good. Uh, okay. So. Here's the story. It'll tell you what you need to know to play the game. Uh, okay, so, ah, uh, so it's like, this is basically edutainment, I think, is what it's kind of considered to be, because you learn as you play games. And really, how fun is that supposed to be? Uh, so it basically just tells you a story, and you need to read all of this stuff, and then you play the game. Curious to see what this will say. Welcome to the game screen. If you need instructions on how to play, click on the instructions button. Uh, instructions. You will meet 16 people who have an opinion on the issue. Oh god, I really don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, then you start by choosing one person in the group of faces. Uh, you click on that person to find out what their argument is. Then you read their statement, and then you judge their statement? I don't know. Let's, uh, let's go back and just try one. Land loss. Uh, this guy is a park ranger. In American cities, nearly half of our urban space is devoted to the car. In Los Angeles, roads take up more space than buildings and green space combined. We are losing lots of valuable land to the car. Um... Okay, then I think what we're supposed to do is drag him somewhere. But I don't know what the referendum was supposed to be on. You <clears throat> must have three people on each side before you can get your score. Ah, oh, great. Yeah, that's just going to take too long. Let's go back home. Um, before we do that, I just want to take a look at some of the menus here. Uh, that's just navigation for the menu or the main screen. I don't think there's really any... Oh! This is a hypercard stack! In the about menu, it's hypercard 2.2 player. So that's interesting. So all this is, is a hypercard stack. That's, uh, that's interesting. Um, I guess it's not, uh, too surprising, though. Uh, what have I done? Um, I gotta turn the music down in case it's copyrighted. So, this is basically a credits movie, where it goes through... Wow.
a lot of different people. So, okay, how do I get out? Click. Uh, okay, let's jump into articles. So I think there's just these four categories, I guess. Um, hmm. Let's try future. Uh, the navigation in this thing is kind of strange because then it's got over here hot topics and explore and those were all in the index already, the main screen. Uh, future tools. Linking to article. I'm wondering what this will tell us. Scientific tools for the future. Humans are a tool-using species, and nowhere is uh, or nowhere is our use of tools more intense and varied than in science. Sure. Uh, computers, genetic engineering, orbiting satellites. Uh, something, something, something. Ecosystems. Meteorologist. Well, I guess these are certain keywords where if you click them. Oh, it just gives you a definition of what it is. Okay, so, yeah. Uh, glaciers. Moving mass of ice and compacted snow. Thank you. And then we have pictures here of random things. Marine biologist observes his subjects in their habitat. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, okay, so this is, uh, what if we click up here? Uh, okay, so different sections of this article that we were looking at. Genetic engineering. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so what if we go back to the menu then? So, um, I was originally thinking this was going to be like a, a fairly large encyclopedia type thing. Uh, Content-wise, I don't think there's an enormous amount of stuff in here. Um, map. I mean, it's interesting, but... The navigation for this, this is kind of uh, a little strange for... Well, I mean, I'm assuming a kid could probably figure this out, but... I don't know, there's probably better ways they could have designed this interface. Uh, okay, so like under data sets and garbage and go. Hmm. Choose one. Let's see. Let's take a look at California. So these numbers are probably extremely out of date. California's population generates around 1,294 kilograms of solid waste per person per year. And if you scroll down, it just goes to different states, I guess. Um, if we jump back to the introduction, what happens if we click this? The oldest pollution control program in the world is garbage collection. Yes, and it just tells us more about garbage. Um, hmm. So, yeah, that's that's interesting, but I don't know how interesting that really is. Uh, what have we done now? Oh, we're still in the stack. No, 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 no. Okay, let's go back home. Oh my goodness. Uh, let's see. What's the help going to say? Okay, so the help just basically tells you the four main sections, articles, explores, hot topics, and data sets. Yeah, that's fascinating. Um, we were already in these other areas. Uh, I think we were already in the map. Let's try search. Okay, this is interesting. So it has this huge index of various things. Um, hmm. Let's take a look. Hmm, what is this one? Cancer. Find. And then the search result includes 
uh, an article. Ooh, article Chernobyl. Let's go to that one. One morning in April 1986, Swedish power plant technicians discovered that workers' clothes and nearby plants and soil were giving off radiation of about four or five times at normal levels. Something, 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 and then Chernobyl went boom. Yeah, okay. So somewhere in this article uh, is the word cancer, I'm assuming, because... The search brought us here. Ooh, look, some photos. Hmm. Guess there were. This is the building of the original uh, lid thing over the reactor. That's interesting. Uh, what else do we have here? Radiation exposure, yeah. Uh, it talks about the radiation exposure here. Ah, uh, uh, here we go. There is the word cancer. So that's why the search brought up this article. So, okay. Let's go back home then. Uh, so, I guess there is a decent amount of uh, information in this program. Um, jump back into the explore. Uh, okay, so under the Explore, uh, we had these categories that I seemed to miss the first time around. So if we look at climate, I guess these are climate, this is biosphere, this is human impact, and this is future. Uh, human impact, if we look at population explosion, what is this? Generation 1? Wait, let's see. Select some values below and then click calculate. Uh, let's say two children, percent who survive to adult, 100%. Life expectancy, let's say 80, calculate. And generation one population, and then generations go down to 533 and then that's it. I don't understand why that... I wonder if that's like the extent of its math ability? Uh, what if we do... Uh, three children, calculate. Oh, okay. This one goes much differently. It scales up throughout the generations, not just... That's weird. I'm going to go back to two children. Calculate. <laughs> Why does this happen? This is... This is odd. 1.8 children? Uh, okay, no, that... Maybe that it, math is correct, because... Yeah. Numbers are weird. How do I do the math? I don't know. I guess, the, yeah, that makes sense then, because if uh, two parents have two children, then the population just kind of evens, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, so that's that appears to be normal then, and I should probably just go back to school and learn how numbers work. Okay. Uh... Let's jump into the data sets again. Um, so if I'm understanding the way this navigation works, the data sets basically... Uh, these are the different main subjects of articles. Um, uh, rich and poor countries. Uh, who do we have here? Let's look at Canada. Canada's per capita GNP in the 80s. Uh, that's fantastic information. Thank you for telling me. Uh, 
nuclear nations. Country that needs nuclear energy. I wonder if... Uh, let's see. There was South Korea, I think. I can't quite find it on the mouse, though. Oh, wait. There we go. North Korea. North Korea is currently says that they don't use nuclear energy, but that has uh, since changed. So, all of this information is out of date. And <laughs> they, they, they refer, I mean, it says the former Soviet Union, um, but the fact that they still reference it as the Soviet Union is, is funny. Um, but yeah, I guess they talk about the uh, the new countries that were the uh, that were part of the Soviet Union there. Hmm. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, so if we jump back home, I don't think there's really anything else um, I want to point out. So, let me see. Um, on the back of the uh, disc here, it's copyrighted as 1995. So, it's, it's a little strange that um, this would be set to such a small resolution. I mean, this is an era where the Power Max were already out. Um, this particular computer, I'm only running it in 832 by 624 resolution, so I mean, it's not like super extreme. I'm, that's that's kind of the resolution I probably would have expected from a lot of computers in 1995. Uh, but it looks like this thing kind of wants to do a 640 by 480 resolution, so... Yeah, you get a lot of this wasted space on the screen. That's uh, kind of annoying, but... I mean, yeah, apparently all this is is a hypercard stack, so... Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else that's uh, really worth uh, displaying here. Um, let's uh, quit the program. Uh, I'm not too sure if a copy of Earth Explorer already exists online for um, uh, archive purposes. And if it's not the case, what I think I might do is uh, maybe make an image of it myself. So, yeah, I'll uh, take a look at that, though. Um, but, yeah, anyway, um, this was a pretty interesting application. I'm uh, glad I bought this on eBay. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, thank you for watching.